everybody. I'm John Boreen with Market Supply and Distribution. John Boreen with Market Supply and Distribution. About 27 years ago, I kind of formatted to start a new company in the paper industry, and we've been successful, highly successful in the last 10 to 12 years in agriculture. And we started up in Washington into the BC area a little bit, and, and then we found a great opportunity in the Willamette Valley, and it's just grown since then to where we sell thousands and thousands of cases of the Halix, which, <coughs> which you're familiar with, the basic. But there's a new item out that we are formatting the growth of that unfortunately comes out of China, but we're working on getting it made over here. And the product is uh, made of sugar cane, uh, bagasse. And what is that? It's a fiber that's ground up, sugar is extracted out of it, and then it's molded through a pipeline into a mold, and then after it's formed, it goes through uh, a sanitation process where it's ultraviolet uh, tested, and so then the one thing that we've required is that it's being bagged. If you notice, some of you have raised a lot of strawberries, I have a lot of people that I talk to all the time and sell, and the current ones that you use are not bagged, but because they're coming out of the Orient, we're making sure they're all bagged in the case at this time. But the big thing has been coming out of China, which we're not very excited about. We, are working hard and earnestly to have them made here. And and then it'll it'll help a lot of things because right now it takes three months to get these over here. And last time we got them in four months. So there's a huge letdown. I think Mike Beringer out there tried some and had some success with them. And what we're talking about, what we just talked about, uh, the, the cooling. 25% faster cooling with this. It's a big thing. And as I see it, it's important. It was mentioned just earlier that there's field cooling going on. That's going to be something maybe that's going to go to the next level here, that we would have field coolers. And if it can be cooled down where you have this product, pulp, it's all, these are both biodegradable, by the way. Both are biodegradable because this is pulp and paper and this is sugar cane. But if it'll 25% sooner cool, this is an insulator. So if they're not being cooled right away, that's an issue. There's this, from day one when they're picked, as Matt well knows, they start deteriorating. Oh, a minute, John. Yes. About a minute and then we'll pass Okay, sorry. No worries. So one of the other things that I was going to mention, we have a new product also that Charlie's and people like that would be interested in to help you sell uh, your product. It's a cover so that when they go to the market, Fred Meyer, you might have seen it in some of the Fred Meyers, a cover that goes on the small four packs. We have it in the four pack for strawberries as well. We have introduced a new one and I have a new handle. 30 seconds. A new handle that would be wonderful for a farmer's market. Here's the farmer market table. Come along, off we go. So you can see it could help because otherwise you're trying to carry it or go somewhere. So that's my, some of my new ploys. Anyway, I look forward to meeting with you. And I'll just say one thing. We, uh, <coughs> we have a little booth out there. And anybody that comes by, we'll give you a chance to get a Seahawk. Go <laughs> T-shirt. Put your, put your name in it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jan Clark, and my company is Fresh Pack Northwest. Um, I just want to reintroduce my company to those of you who don't know me and reintroduce us as how we've changed um, in recent years. Um, as I've heard, I guess the longer you've been at this, the more often you hear you've gone out of business or retired, but here we are. Um, I just wrote down a few things because it's been such a long time since I started the business. Um, my business was started over two decades ago. When I left Georgia Pacific in the corporate world, it was to spend time with my infant son. And he incidentally turns 25 this week. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, it didn't take me long to realize I, didn't, I missed my customers, and my customers missed me, so then I created Fresh Pack Northwest. Shortly after Fresh Pack's inception, 
I partnered with Warehouser, quickly becoming a top customer with the help of all of you. We combined small orders to benefit from the economies of efficient run size. Our first objective was that of designing a strawberry box, one that was stronger, deeper, and water resistant with a professionally crafted visual design. I remember, as probably a lot of you do, that at that time, growers only had access to flimsy corrugated boxes and mushroom boxes that bowed under moist conditions, or they brought in upcycled boxes from the California mar market, and they'd pick them up at the grocery stores. Um, the problem was the California boxes were in the wrong shape, and you had to use mesh baskets with aren't good to strawberries. Anyway, from that time, we created what we believed to be the perfect box with our iconic red and green fresh Oregon berry print. If you take a look at the photo on our little flyer, um, you'll see that familiar design. Over, after over 20 years of partnership with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of boxes later, Warehouser was bought by International Paper. After giving them many opportunities, Fresh Pack chose to walk away from over 300 of our own box designs, which was no small feat. The final box that I designed and bought from them was, again, a strawberry box, which true to form for the new company, they printed upside down. Just ask Marty Nanneman, he wasn't amused. But now we joke about it. Um, with the need to recreate the good quality and customer service once had with Warehouser, we partnered with Boise Cascade, Smurf at Stone Container, and Longview Fiber to place specific items within each plant. In just those two short years, Boise has become PCA, Smurfit is now Rock 10, and Longview is Capstone Container. What this means to you is it makes them all the more competitive, which is guaranteed to give you better pricing. We have four distribution sites in Oregon, one in Northern Washington, and one in Visalia, California. This is for those of you who want smaller quantities of product than we can efficiently directly ship, and aside from corrugated packaging, as, as always, we offer one-stop shopping for all your packaging needs. And at the left side of the table back there, I brought in a sample of products that are specific to packaging strawberries. Anyway, thank you. Hi, I'm Matt Corcoran with Ernst Irrigation in St. Paul. I see lots of familiar, friendly faces out here, and I want to thank you guys for your support over the years. You bought a lot of stuff from us, and we appreciate it. Um, we sell, we kind of specialize in selling complete irrigation systems, so we're not really a, a source for commodities so much. Um, but uh, we sell everything from pumps, you know, PTO pumps, electric pumps, gas-powered pumps, diesel pumps, uh, to uh, filters for drip systems. Um, I'm assuming that many of you are talking about drip irrigation and not necessarily overhead watering. Would that be the way it is? How do you water your, your strawberries? Okay. Um, so we have, we sell filters clear from uh, Plastic filters that are maybe inch and a half for if you've got a 30 gallon a minute system, clear up to stainless steel sand media filters if you're large scale, maybe you know 800, 1,000 gallons a minute. Everything in between, we can we can take care of you. Surface water, well water. We in the past have sold uh, Regal gas chlorinators for uh, sanitizing the water. This year, we've also started selling a, uh, it's a hydrology brand pellet chlorinator to kind of being dragged into that. Um, so we do have a unit in our booth down there in the, in the middle of the D building there, if you want to come by and take a look at that. Um, we sell uh, PVC pipe from half inch through 12 inch size. We sell aluminum sprinkler pipe. We sell wheel lines. All these things are used on strawberries. Um, my job with Ernst primarily is to sell drip. So on those we have uh, we sell 
uh, Toro Aquatrax tape. We sell Netafim tape. We also sell the John Deere T tape now. Um, we also sell uh, hard drippos with inline emitters. Um, it probably costs five times as much as a tape product, but um, sometimes it makes more sense to use that. But if you're if you're growing several acres, um, the, the tape is a good product to use. We stock just a little bit of mulch on hand for people to pick up one roll of, of mulch if they need it or something. But mulch is one of those commodities where you can probably buy it as cheaply as we can. So we try not to we try not to sell too much mulch. Um, Let's see, we, we generally service what we sell. Um, so we try to stay our area that we would sell our products. We normally be within a four hour radius of St. Paul. But we do a fair amount of business in Hawaii and Alaska and then even, you know, I, I sold a lot of stuff tape to uh, Guam. We had a guy growing vegetables in Guam and he was buying all this stuff from us. So um, anyway, I think that probably covers it. Well, thank you. My name is Brian Unger, and I am the president of Unger Designs. Um, I'm here specifically to talk to you about uh, bed shaping equipment for strawberries and uh, mulch, <clears throat> plastic mulch application equipment. Um, I started Unger Designs about a year ago as a freelance mechanical design firm, um, specializing in pretty much anything from small electromechanical packages to large farm equipment. So it's a fairly new company, haven't done a whole lot of work yet, but I'm looking to get more into farm equipment. I grew up on my family's farm, um, deviated from there to go to college for a, a degree in mechanical engineering, and uh, have gradually converged back to the farm through this, this design of farm equipment. Um, a few years ago, my father and I took on a hefty challenge, as he mentioned, to design a piece of farm equipment. Um, to compete with a lot of the uh, other solutions that are currently on the market. Um, as most of you know, or as, as has been mentioned, strawberries do well on raised beds with plastic mold, especially the uh, Albion variety. Um, prior to this equipment, Matt would uh, run, I think, three passes through the field to get the same beds made, is that right? Um, with three pieces of equipment and th that alone was was the fact that we were running three three passes through the field with small pieces of equipment was evident that we could probably do a better a better job with a single piece that would do all three in the same pass. We went out on the market and we found a couple different solutions or, or that did and those solutions were large required larger pieces of equipment and were quite expensive. Um, we took a first stab at a design for a uh, bed shaper, and this design made two beds, each with a single row. The, <clears throat> the equipment would mound the dirt, lay a drip line down, shape the bed, lay plastic mulch, poke holes for the plants, as well as uh, run a marker to show you where your next bed and previous bed were compared to you. Um, the solution we came up with was about half the weight as the competition, half the length, and much cheaper. We also found that the speed at which we were able to operate this equipment was faster than the things that we'd done before. Um, a few years later, we took what we had learned from that and built a second version of the bed shaper. This one had a much more efficient frame, easier to work around, and we made everything on it adjustable. Um, since then, I've, I've made the design uh, configurable upon order, so the number of beds that it makes, the width of the bed, the height of the bed, the number of rows per bed, and the, the number of drip lines per bed are all <coughs> configurable. I currently don't have any pricing on it, but I would like to get more into this if there is interest. So if any of you have questions about it, ask later or see me afterwards. Thanks, Brian. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nathan Dorn. I work for Rider Affiliated Companies. I'm um, one of those guys from California that I've heard a little bit about today. Uh, I'm here because I work in our knowledge and innovation group and I concentrate on harvest equipment, uh, specifically around aids to help the harvest of strawberries. 
Um, so we largely, we largely work with GK Machine right here in Donald, um, a quality builder that concentrates on, concentrates on price and improvements in performance all the time. So, uh, you know, I encourage you to take a look at them and their, their booth down there. Um, we kind of, at Ryder, we view labor as a pre-competitive position now because we're now in this place where labor is dwindling in the United States, specifically in California. And it, there's two options for a grower. One is to raise his wages or find ways to attract his neighbor's employees. And then the second option is to find ways to make them more productive. And we view the, the first option is the fastest way for all of us to go out of business. So the ideas that we come up with, we're, we're very open to sharing and making sure the entire community has a knowledge of it. It may not fit everybody's scale, but it is, our, uh, it is part of being a part of the farming community as you all are here today for that same reason. Um, as I said, we do a lot of our work with GK Machine. We build, um, we grow on plastic culture all throughout California and Florida and Mexico. And um, specifically, we've developed a Mercado machine, um, is what it's called. It was invented by one of the growers in, um, in Watsonville, California. And it was all set up around reducing the the, the non-productive time of the harvester, making it so they didn't have to enter and exit the field as much. Um, they spend more time harvesting. So we have a trolley that runs in front of them. Un unfortunately, it's been called the Berry Ferry for a long time, so <laughs> I've been trying to get away from that. Um, it facilitates between five and seven people, um, depending on your bed widths. The narrower beds, the more people you get behind it, and it has an option, uh, the ability to improve their productivity by as up to, by as much as 40%. We pick direct to the clam and to the crate, and it goes to the, uh, onto the machine, and then is unloaded about between half an hour and an hour later at the edge of the field. Um, we've made options or versions of this machine as time's gone by, making it smaller to fit inside of tunnels for those farmers that have tunneled. Uh, strawberries or um, even building ones that work at night so that places like Florida where we grow berries and in the heat in the, of the day makes the quality go through the floor afternoon by by noon time we can expect the rejection rate of 50 to 75 percent of our fruit in Florida and the heat is so high that heat stress for the employees is unworkable so people come to the fields and are only able to get four hours a day with night harvest, we've been able to get them there eight hours a day and get all our fruit through the system. And we do that basically by heavy flood lighting, but it it's, has to meet certain price points, which GK and the pump companies we partner with have done a great job at, so that we can manage our, our bottom line dollars. Um, we also have built with GK two men machines, solar powered, Employees really enjoy the idea of silent machinery, and um, they, those are not quite as reliable yet. We're still working to develop them with GK, but we think that there's some room, especially for the smaller farmers, on two-man machine. The target for us is always several 5000 or it's about $5,000 per employee to improve their productivity 25 to 50%. So if we can do that, we get a long ways and we compete with the big machine builders like Ed Colby out of Oxnard who build the large conveyor machines that are more like $10,000 per employee to get the same level of productivity. Um, yeah, we also work on other projects, uh, electrostatic sprayers, we buy a lot from On Target here in Mount Angel and um, we are working on field cooling, but not necessarily there yet. It's, it's I think, farther away than you imagine. Um, and other things along the way. But harvest is definitely our strat strategic point. So, thank you. So we have quite a array of uh, difference across this panel. But um, again, we're going to open it up for questions from the audience. So. Um, should be pretty broad if you guys have any 
to start off with. I think um, one of the main questions, um, the price points for you all, it seems like it's, I mean, across the board and kind of depend. Is that the case? Is that prices, like where can customers find prices or do they have to, you know, speak directly with you? It's pretty individual as far as prices go when we put an order together, whether it's custom, um, custom boxes, um, whether you need artwork, whether it's off we the shelf. Hear you. If it's off the shelf, um, we run 100,000 boxes at a time, and that would be an economy for you. But it wouldn't necessarily be specific to your print, for example. Um, smaller quantities are picked up generally at one of our distribution houses. They have to put their profit into it. So really, it, it does depend on volume and the um, complexity of your project. Um, we're not opposed to going out and meeting with your retailers and figuring out exactly what they want to see in your packaging. We design labels. Um, we can put it together just about anything, but every case is really um, individual, um, just like your farms are. Um, but if I were to, I know a, a question I get asked a lot is, just give me an idea of what a price is for a flat with all the hallux in it. There is no, I mean, the range is, is so incredible you'd be disappointed because we just can't guess. Do you agree, John? Uh, somewhat. I mean, you have some ranges on like 12, a full flat, maybe, you know, 85 to 90 cents. We've developed a couple new ones that is a quick fold that doesn't have a center in it. So there's a lot of complexities there, but that's true. We, we really have, uh, the thing we do, we have a warehouse with a large inventory and much of it throughout the year. And we have a fleet of trucks and we pride ourselves in really good service. A quality product, service, and then a value that would equal satisfaction. It's kind of our thing there. Uh, but we definitely have the ability to do custom printing. Much we're competitors here. Much, much of the same labeling. <coughs> labeling. I'm trying to have what I have done is to be a leader in what I call world-class packaging. I have a passion. We have a passion. My son also is an engineer, as Matt's son is mechanical engineer and he's come aboard with a lot of fresh ideas for us to be in the format of uh, first the first thing out uh, an, an advantage to the end user for people like the seasons market to Charlie's to to the farm to where we can help make a, a difference in a larger profit for you um, I have the, the primary objective of, a, of an irrigation system, for, for us to sell it, since we know that you can, there's lots of places you can go and buy the materials, is to make it as uniform as possible for the lowest price. So I can't really give you pricing, but I can tell you that I, I do my best to make it the least amount for you so that you'll buy it from me instead of from the guy down the street. Given that, uh Unger Designs is a very small startup firm. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm going to do is, is going to be configurable and customizable to the user, so pricing will be heavily dependent on what you're looking for and, and what you need. And we don't really build in pricing because GK does it, mm. so we only uh, negotiate for ourselves, and a lot of that carries the engineering costs for us. So, um, But we target anything below ten thousand dollars per operator to be to gain that efficiency and it all depends on how much efficiency we can gain for them and what features we're looking to put on it the lighting systems are very expensive typically but we get that back in quality and crates through the system and it's more about value contribution than it is about cost go ahead Ernie the emulsion the drip tape that's not reused it's all thrown away after Mulch and drip tape, can it be reused or? Yeah, the mulch, the mulch is generally made to last for, uh, the, the mulch that we sell is Climagro, and it's made to last for about three years. And the whole idea of that is that you have time to remove it before it disintegrates and makes a big mess. 
the drip tape, generally, uh, some guys reuse it. Once you pull on it to pull it out of the ground and you stretch it, it usually distorts the flow path. And so it may not be as uniform. Um, if you, you do have a uh, tape retrieving machine that you perk it, put at the end of the row, it'll do like a thousand feet per minute. You can hook it up to your tractor. Um, but generally people use that to get the tape out to throw it away. But we do have reusable spools that you can reel it onto and reuse it. If, if, you're, if you can get it out of the ground without wrecking it and it's uh, fairly clean, yeah, you, can, you can reuse it probably one, one time. You would use it on something where the uh, uniformity is not as critical. So can you give us a price for the acre or the foot or the ball? Oh, the, tape, the tape would be uh, used like 8 mil tape. It's, it's probably um, maybe a little bit under 2 and a half cents a foot. Uh, the mulch, I can't give you a price on the mulch because what we do, we end up just ordering a few pallets at a time just so we have someone, someone runs out. But generally, um, I think we pay almost as much in freight as we do for the material on the mulch. If, um, if we had enough demand to where guys wanted to put together like, you know, a container of it, then we, would, we could probably be a lot more competitive, but we're, we're not competitive on the mulch. Another question? Go ahead. Have you designed a double row system for the mulcher bed shaper? <coughs> we have a bed shaper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have two versions. One's a, a, a two beds, single row each, and the second version is a, a single bed, double row, and it'll. It's configurable, so we could do two beds with double rows, three beds with double rows, or a single bed with four rows on it, if we wanted to. I was going to say, we have a bed shaper and a mulch layer, but I would say that it would not be as successful as Brian's. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Brian, on your rolls, what size roll are you using? What's your bed roll shape? What's your roll? What? Standard the the width. width of the plastic? Yeah, that you're using for your rolls. Uh, we were using a 72 inch on this last one. 72? Yeah, it'll it'll take whatever size you need for the bed size. So, so you what, five foot? Yeah. And how many, when you jump up to the two beds that you're laying, what kind of horsepower are you looking at to pull that? Um, the 2440 was a 60 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah, and that was pulling the two single row beds. Oh, that's good. But that was right on the verge of what that tractor could that was do. So. Drive. That was just rear wheel drive. That's still pretty good. Um, another question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that there's a certain amount of equipment that you can use for your tractor. Yeah. Um, I think the, I mean, again, this is across the board, is going to be variable for applicable answers, but um, is there any renting or maintenance of equipment that? Uh, you guys offer, or is it? I mean, obviously, it's not applicable to a few of you guys, but of the more machine side of things or um, equipment supply, um, is there maintenance that could be associated with you know buying a machine? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, you know, that's that's one of the pain points in putting any machine in the harvest field now because. It's more complicated than the Carrillo, the little hand cart that you have. And you have to build a culture of taking care of the equipment. So largely ours is just a small 20 horsepower motor, motor with a hydraulic pump that runs it. But um, it's a culture shift to know that you have to change that oil every couple weeks or that you have to uh, report problems like guards missing or something along the way, broken wires. Um, so. Maintenance is a is a struggle with some farm some farms when they started up anywhere we go. That's we try to drive out the maintenance in the, you know any of our work. Um, it actually does pertain in our industry for um, companies that want to use an automatic box machine. 
um, our manufacturers provide the machine on a lease basis and so you run through your boxes and they erect them for you. They maintain the machines. We also have um, machines available to label your clamshells. If you want to set those up in line, um, you can have them for lease for the season or you can purchase the machines or we can pre-label the clamshells for you. So machines come in in a, in a certain way. We can also acquire um, like stretch wrapping equipment, taping equipment um, from our distributors for you to use. Yes, I, we have that same equipment available to automatically uh, set up. It's for the larger, larger size farms, so the number that it would it'll take up a lot of space once it's put together. As you know, a flat like this versus something put together, it's going to take a lot of room. But for the larger farms, it's definitely going to be efficiency, and we do the same thing. We print uh, labels and uh, put them on uh, the various uh, clamshells and do assist in design of it and uh, any of those other items, any further questions on it, we would like to talk to you about it after whatever. Um, and then I think I have one last question, unless there's someone else in the group that has, um, but where do you ship most of your products? I mean, are you just strictly the Pacific Northwest or, um, Know, where's the movement of your equipment or supplies? For, for market supply, we're generally sh shipping in the northwest region. We're into BC, Idaho, Montana, Northern California, and, and of course, all of Oregon. And uh, we uh, pride ourselves in really quick service and turnaround. Um, ditto on the areas that we ship to, but we have shipped across the United States when it's made sense. Generally, those things come directly from the manufacturers, and they're drop shipped or UPSed out. But specifically, the people that we call on would be um, up through the Northwest, up through BC, and down um, through California, Northern California. And generally, people come to St. Paul and pick up pick up their orders there. Or sometimes, if it's really big, we'll direct ship it. Um, we try not to deliver because that adds a lot of cost, but. So most people just pick up the orders in St. Paul. So far, the extent of my shipping has been from a shop to a field. <laughs> but I am interested in shipping pretty much anywhere in the U.S. It's <laughs> no shipping yet. <laughs> so we have a little over 300 of the GK Harvest Aids, and most of those are in California. Some are in Florida, and, and there's a number good number of them in central Mexico and Baja Mexico um, and our target with those is to compete with any job that pays the same as what a harvester would get without them so if we could try to compete anywhere we have a labor where they could get a construction job a restaurant job or any other job than harvesting berries we're, we're trying to send them equipment to raise their opportunity to earn um, we have about 50 of the on-target sprayers, mostly centered around the SWD problem you spoke of earlier. They've, they've got, a, we feel, a very competitive advantage um, in dealing with that problem, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, then I'll thank the panelists and...